This is our top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis for March 29, 2019. I'm your analyst, JC De Guzman. For the top 5 gainers, I'll be talking about Mac, Maxis, Bloom, Green, Vita. For the top 5 losers, I will be talking about GTCAP, PA, BHI, Surpass, Food. So let's begin with Mac. On Friday, MAC closed at 22.4 support. We can plot the support. We can we can consider this 20 pesos per share as the support level for the resistance. Of course, the the only sto historical resistance that we can cite here is near 23 pesos. But if we would like to go beyond 23 pesos, we will have to plot an up Fibonacci chart, and that's what I did. So let me let's check what's the uh, psychological resistance of Mac. It's close to okay. Let's check again. Let's zoom this in so we can see it properly. There you go. It's near 28.84. It's the 61.8% 61 of the Fibonacci extension. Okay, 28.84. I don't want to keep you, you know, I don't want, to, I'm, I'm not insinuating that you should keep your hopes up just because the psychological resistance is near 28.84. It's not a promise. It's not a promise that, uh, that Mac will surely especially that adverb surely especially that um, it's not a promise that it will hit 28.84 or anywhere close uh, close to that direction although it's a probability so my the the, the 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 logical recommendation here is to sell once your trailing stop loss is hit especially if you already have a position on Mac okay now if you don't have a position on Mac yet you have two options. It's either you wait for a pullback near 21 or near 20 pesos per share, the immediate support, okay? Or you buy at its current price, provided provided these two conditions are present. And what are those two conditions? First, there should be uh, a relatively strong volume that supports the upward movement of the price should it continue should it continue it's a question okay it's still a question because we still don't know if it if the ascent in price will continue the, the, uh, on Monday the second condition is this the range the most voluminous and most traded range should be registered closer to the intraday high than the intraday low okay so remember those two conditions uh, these two conditions should be present before you entertain the idea of buying on breakout or buying at its current price. Okay, Replay that video for those two conditions so that uh, you can take note of those and check within the first 15 to 30 minutes of trading if those conditions are have been, have been met. So you can decide for yourself if you would like to buy on the current price price level of MAC. Uh, meanwhile, MAC, uh, MACD is bullish. Uh, just some fair warning though that RSI is already about to hit the overbought, the classical overbought territory near 80%. Okay. Historical volatility is at 42%. That gives MAC a low risk level. Okay, so I'm not going to post, I'm not going to mention the price volume distribution for MAC. I encourage you to, uh, for us to have a discussion, an exchange of thoughts, exchange of thoughts in our private clients forum. So please do post your questions, your requests for the latest price volume distribution analysis for these 10 stocks. Okay, I, ha I have to do this so, so that we can really have a conversation not just a one-way communication whereby I'm the only one talking and no one is already asking 
because I know lots of you are, are watching the videos. I can see the, the number of views per video, but I've noticed that only a few really ask questions or follow-up questions or clarificato clarificatory um, questions. So now let's move on to Maxis. On Friday, Maxis closed at 13.8. Support is at 11.84. Resistance is at 13.90. Oh yes, it's 10 centavos away from breaking out from that resistance. Uh, volume last Friday was relatively strong as it's above the 10-day volume average. And it got a handsome, you know, pretty handsome volume last week, especially from Tuesday until Friday. The, the past uh, four trading days registered strong volume above the 10-day volume average in support of the green candlesticks. Okay, this support at 11.84, I would consider that a strong support because it's the intersection between. It's actually like a melting pot between the these three moving averages that I'm using, simple moving averages to be specific. Okay, I'm using the 10. 20, uh, 10, 50, and 200 day simple moving averages, by the way. Um, for Maxis, the 2019 uh, net foreign sentiment is bearish, net foreign selling. MACD remains bullish. Historical volatility is at 41%, almost equal to the volatility score of MAC. So Maxis still has a low risk level. My overall sentiment on Maxis is bullish. My recommendation for those who have a position on Mac is to, of course, sell once your trailing stop loss is hit. If you don't have Maxis yet and you uh, you think you you think that the bullishness will continue this week on Monday, remember those two conditions that I mentioned when I was discussing Mac MAC. If those two conditions are present on Maxis then you have a data-driven reason to buy at the current price level of Maxis. I'm not saying to buy at the prevailing price. I'm saying you should buy within the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades. In other words, the range, the most voluminous and most traded range. Okay, that's it for Maxis. Let's take a look at Bloom. By the way, whenever we, whenever I talk about the top five gainers and top five losers analysis, I'm referring to the short. This is about short-term trading. This is not about long-term investing. If you are up to long-term investing, then you should be referring to our long-term investing table here on your dashboard. Okay. I just want to be clear on this one, especially for the new subscribers. Okay. Now, Bloom. Bloom closed on Friday at 12 pesos per share. Let me plot the immediate support. There you go. Immediate support is at 11.12. Resistance is at 12, 13 pesos. Okay. Now, volume. Let's take a look at volume. Volume was above, almost equal, if not, if, if, if not slightly above the 10-day volume average for Bloom. So, although I'm not that confident enough, the convic my conviction is not so bullish that the ascent in price will continue because volume was really not that outstanding when compared to the, to the size of volume of the trading days last February 8 all the way to February 18. Okay. Alright, so MACD, on the other hand, is still below the signal line. That's a bearish signal. Okay, Bloom has a volatility score of 29%. That's a low risk level. Um, although the price of Bloom is already above the 10-day volume average, MACD, remember, it's yet to cross above the signal line. Why am I emphasizing the position of the price relative to the position of the 10 SMA? and the position of MACD relative to the position of the signal line. It's because when the price, when, when, when there's no volume issue, and when MACD crosses above the signal line, and when the price rises above the 10 SMA, it's a confirmed buy signal. 
Okay. Now, those three conditions have not been met yet. MACD is still below the signal line. Okay. That's why I'm not over, overly bullish on Bloom. But we can have different, totally different sentiments on Bloom. I may be neutral to bullish, but you could be you could be aggressively bullish or overly bullish on bloom okay it's okay that we have varying sentiments what's important here is that we all have a strategy on what we should do regardless if the price goes to the north or to the southward direction that's what's important here at the end of the day we should all uh, make some money in, in our trades okay now my overall recommendation for bloom is neutral to bullish if you already have a position, you know the drill. Trailing stop loss. Okay? Failing stop loss. For the new subscribers, I wrote an article where I use the vernacular language in Tagalog. You can take a look at the newsletters tab and then read volume 1 number 13. Volume 1 number 13, this one. Read this. Okay? So that you know what, what is, why is that JC always talks about trailing stop loss what is a trailing stop loss why should i why should i calculate that and how can i calculate the trailing stop loss that newsletter will answer those questions okay now uh, if you don't have bloom yet and you are thinking if you should do a test buy or not go back to those two conditions that i mentioned when i was talking about mac a while back MAC the first stock that I talked about those two conditions so now what are those two conditions there should be a relatively strong volume in support of the green price action it should be a green candlestick number two condition the most voluminous and most traded range should be near the intraday high it should be closer to the intraday high than the intraday low if those two conditions are met then you consider doing a test buy but not at any price. You should do a test buy within the most voluminous and most traded range. Okay, that's it for Bloom. Now, let's talk about green. Green closed on Friday at 2.42. Support is at 2.34. Resistance is at 2.90. This is a pretty strong support level. Actually, we can adjust it to the adjust it somewhere here. 2.23. Okay, now the price is already above the 10 SMA, but still the price is too far. It's still very far from crossing above the 50 SMA. Okay, there's a lot of work to do for a green to reach that point. Now, meanwhile, MACD shows uh, a bullish convergence with the signal line, but still it's, it's yet to cross above the signal line. Historical volatility is at 67% and that's a moderate risk level for green. Volume wise, volume wise made it touch the 10 day volume average last Friday, but that's not for me it's not it's not big enough for to, to you know to boost my conviction, you know, for me to say aha, this is it. This is it. I'm overly bullish on green. So I, I did not get that uh, kind of feeling when I saw the volume last Friday, but who knows? Okay. So we have to use some data for us to decide whether it's worth it to enter a new position or not on green, despite the not so high volume last Friday. So what should we do then? So first, my overall sentiment on green is neutral to bullish. For those who are still thinking if it's worth it to enter a new position on green or not, still, those two conditions that I mentioned uh, a while back, those two conditions should be present uh, before you do a test buy on in any upward moving stock. Okay, it's, uh, When you are yet to enter a new position. Okay. It's not that difficult to decide. I think it's 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 less it's less difficult. I'm not saying it's totally not difficult, but it's less difficult to decide whether you should top up or not. If you already 
if you are al already holding some shares on uh, in in an upward moving stock it's it's less less challenging what's more challenging is when you are deciding if it's worth it to enter a new position new position your first shares okay that's more challenging than deciding whether you should top up or not okay so there you go for green now let's talk about vita 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 sapto how would you like to pronounce that support is at immediate support is at 1.6 closing price what was at 1.70 resistance is at 1.82 near 1.82 volume last friday was high okay this is an outstanding volume because it's it's not just equal to its 10 day volume average but it's i think it's about 300 percent or 200 percent above its 10 day volume average the price is already above the 10 sma but the but the the 10 SMA is below is it's below the 50 SMA and the 50 SMA is below the the 200 day SMA. So as far as the alignment of the moving averages is, is concerned, Vita is still moving in a bearish channel in a long term scale. Definitely not out of the woods yet. Okay. Vita has to close above the two peso per share line for these uh, for this uh, current prevailing alignment of the moving averages to reverse. Okay. The ideal position uh, for any stock, especially if you have already entered, if you already bought some shares on on any stock, the ideal position of the moving averages is seeing the shorter term moving averages above the longer term ones okay so the exact opposite of what we're currently seeing that's the ideal position for again let me make it clear it's the ideal position for of the smes for those who already have a position on the stock for those who don't have a position on the stock yet of course you don't want to you don't want to pray for that to happen so so uh, immediately instantly because you would like to enter enter a new position first before that happens so you can position yourself okay so let's take a look at the macd macd remains bullish in the short term historical volatility is at 28 percent that's a low risk level for vita foreign investors uh, i'm not going to factor this in it's not that it's insignificant it's an insignificant amount i'm referring to the net foreign trade but for what it's worth, it's, it's a net foreign selling for 2019 year to date. Foreign investors are bearish on Vita for the 2019 year to date. My overall sentiment is bullish on Vita. My recommendation is that it's either you follow your trailing stop loss or you sell once the resistance at 1.82 is hit. Lock in some profits. It's it's not compulsory to sell everything. You can sell in tranches just like how you can buy in tranches as well. If you would like to um, buy near the prevailing price of Vita, make sure that those two conditions that I have repeatedly <laughs> that I have been repeatedly mentioning since uh, the first stock. If those two conditions are present, then you can do a test buy again 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 not at any price we don't buy at any price we only buy within the range that got the most volume the biggest volume and the highest number of trades okay so please post in our private clients forum there will be a thread that will be posted for this top five gainers and top five losers analysis inside the short-term trading section of the forum that's where you can ask for these uh, 10 stocks uh, uh, price volume distribution charts okay let's have a communication okay uh, i'd like to talk to you i'd like to hear your your sentiments your questions your comments or whatever let's let's talk okay now that's it for vita now let's move on to gt cap top loser number one as of friday gt cap closed last friday at 931.5 support is at we can cite this one as a support level too. 
930 pesos per share. If it breaks down below 930, your next support is at 867. Resistance is at immediate resistance is at 1040. If it, break, if it breaks out above 1040 with volume, the next stop would be 1135. 1135, that's the next resistance. Okay, last Friday's red candlestick came with a towering volume. Obviously, above the 10-day volume average, that that's already bearish then. MACD remains moving below the signal line. Historical volatility is 45%, low risk level, just a few points away from being a, a moderate risk stock. My overall sentiment, oh, before that, let me make some comments about the net foreign trade. Meanwhile, foreign investors registered a net foreign selling worth 117 million pesos last Friday. Net foreign selling. And the year-to-date sentiment of foreign investors on GTCAP is bearish. Meaning to say, they are net foreign sellers, or, it's, or it is a net foreign selling for year-to-date, 2019. My overall sentiment is bearish. My recommendation is that you wait for some signs if GTCAP will consider 930, the 930 level as a rebound zone. Okay, now if, if, the, if the downtrend direction continues... Take a look at the next support at 867 pesos per share. Okay. Alright, so pardon the, the background music. These politicians are already doing their thing. Okay. So 867. If it again it, if it breaks down below 930, wait near 867. Wait near 867, okay? Next, we have PA. Pacifica closed last Friday at 0 0.04. Resistance is at, let me plot the support and resistance. Okay. Resistance is at 0 0.05. Support is at 0 0.035. Okay, or you can use this uh, range as well. This is 0 0.038. Between 0 0.035 to 0 0.038, that's a support range. Resistance is at 0 0.0512 or 0 0.05 to the nearest uh, hundreds. Now, uh, resistance... Or the, the volume last Friday was above the 10-day volume average. Okay, that was really, it goes to show that Fridays, the, the, traders, the traders last Friday were decided to lock in some profits from the third Thursday's ascent in price. Okay, I'm not going to cite the foreign investors' transactions on PA because it's insig insignificant in value. MACD remains above the signal line although it's it looks like it's it's poised to register or well, not really not really maybe if we will get another red candlestick this monday or tuesday then a bearish convergence between MACD and signal line might be spotted historical volatility is at 68 percent that's a moderate risk level for pa my, my overall sentiment is bearish on PA. My recommendation is that we, you wait for a pullback near that support range that I mentioned a while back. Between 0 0.035 to 0 0.035, uh, 0 0.035 to 0 0.038. Okay. That's where you reevaluate once it enters that enters that range you reevaluate if the selling sentiment has subsided if it has then consider consider doing a test buy within the most voluminous trade and within the most voluminous and most traded range now let's move on to BHI Boulevard Holdings closed last Friday at 0 0.067 support is at 0 0.649 resistance is at Let's move this here. Okay, resistance is at 
Let me plot this. 0 0.0792. Okay. Uh, the candlestick of uh, BHI is already below the 10 SMA and it is about to cross below the 50-day SMA as well. That's not looking good. That's not looking good. Well, it looks good if you would like to be if you would like to see BHI tank all the way to the lowest possible price it could get, especially if you are if you are a bounce if if a uh, bounce play is your kind of a game. Okay, volume was above the 10-day volume average. In fact, it's actually above it's 100% above the 10-day volume average. So that's bearish really for BHI last Friday. MACD continues its uh, bearish divergence from the signal line. Okay, bearish. BHI has a 41% risk level, or not risk level, but historical volatility, and that's a low risk level for BHI. My overall sentiment is bearish on BHI. My recommendation is wait, you wait for the price to hit 0 0.0649. Re you reevaluate the situation once it hits that price level. If the downward price movement seems to have subsided or relaxed a bit within that level, then you reevaluate the situation if it's about time for you to, if it makes sense for you do, to do a test buy. Remember those two conditions that I have repeatedly, that I've been repeatedly mentioning since uh, the first talk in this video. Do a test buy if those two conditions are present. Okay. For those who, who bought PHI and still has it in their portfolio, make sure that you sell once your trailing stop loss is hit. Now, moving on to Surpass. Surpass closed last Friday at 1.13. Support is at 1.05. Resistance is at 1.31. Last Friday's volume came was a little was a few a little bit below the 10-day volume average. Maybe that that was the one of the reasons why it managed to hold above 1.13. Okay, 1.13. Now, uh, foreign investors, meanwhile, are not are not active. They they are no longer as active as they were as they were on the second week of February this year. Okay. Now, MACD remains. It keeps its uh, bearish divergence from the signal line, and volatility score is at 78%. That makes surpass a high risk level. Newbie traders, FYI, this is a high risk level stock. My overall sentiment is bearish. Uh, my recommendation is that you wait for a much low, a lower price near 1.05, preferably near one peso per share or one to 1.05. If it enters that zone, that range, that support range, you reevaluate the price volume distribution of surpass. Those two conditions that I have mentioned a while back, if those two are present, consider doing a test buy. Okay, that's it for surpass. Now moving on to food. Okay, food closed last Friday at 0 0.95. Let me plot the support level. It has lots of uh, mid-term and short-term supports here. We can consider this this one as a support level as well, a resistance rather. And this one here, we can consider this one. Okay, so here, immediate support is at 0.92. If it breaks down below 0 0.92, the next support would be 0 0.86. Resistance is okay, before it, be, it before it breaks out above 1.13, it should break out above 1.05 first. Okay, so that those are the immediate support and resistance levels of food. Last Friday's volume came with a towering towering toll. It's a toll. Red can read the volume bar above the 10-day volume average. I think it's about 150, if not 200 percent, above its 10-day volume average. 
foreign investors' participation is insignificant on food. MACD maintains its bearish divergence from the signal line. Historical volatility is at 35%. It's a low risk level. My recommendation, my overall, oh, no, first, my overall sentiment on food is bearish. My recommendation is that you wait for a pullback near 0.92. 0 0.9 to 0 0.92. If the downtrend, uh, if, the, if the bearishness of the volume does not relax once it enters enters that level 0 0.9 to 0 0.92 then consider consider uh, maintaining your wait and see mode all the way to 0 0.86 level that's my overall sentiment for food and my recommendation so there you go you've heard my technical analysis overall sentiment and recommended plans of actions for these 10 stocks for march 29 2019 uh, I do hope you will have a data driven you we will be through this you will be able to make a data driven decision for yourself based on your financial goals your investment horizon and your personal risk tolerance okay so again my name is JC de Guzman your analyst at Equilist Analytics Incorporated have a good day